Hi, everybody. Welcome to the latest episode of the Impact Series hosted by 4.0. I'm Michael Palmer, uh, co-founder at 4.0 and also lead recruiter. And today, really happy uh, to be joined by Max DeCorsi, uh, who is uh, one of the co-founders at EcoPlanet. Um, Max, welcome. Hi. Hi. Very, very happy to be here. Super cool. Yeah, I mean, it's great to have you on. We've obviously we've had a little bit of chat off air on this. You're a you know, fun, super cool guy to to chat to. <laughs> um, so I'm yeah, I'm really excited about this. Hopefully, you yeah, know, the, the viewers will will, will kind of you know, see that side of you as well. But we are here to talk about some serious things too. Um, and that's look, so Eco Planet. Um, yeah, very cool company. Yeah, you know, climate tech, green tech startup, scale up company based in Munich. Um, so, but for those people that aren't familiar with you, if aren't familiar with the business, can you give us a little bit of insight into the company, the mission, um, yeah, the sustainability, the climate challenges you're helping to to kind of to fight, and and obviously your specific solution to those problems. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much, and uh, thanks again for having me. So, as I said, right, I'm, I'm Max. I'm one of the co-founders of EcoPlanet. We actually, our company just officially turned one the other day. Um, I founded a company together with Henry. Henry Kepler, um, who is my co-founder at this company. Um, what we are driving on, what we are here for is to make companies the leaders of the energy transition. And this is just something which is super important. Henry and myself, we've been raised and really been working with uh, medium-sized industrial companies, companies in total. And uh, what we realized is that these companies are not really contributing to the energy transition as much yeah. as they could and as much as they need to. Right. So what we actually did and what we started doing a little over 12 months ago is we built up a software business that is helping these companies not only saving money on energy, uh, on energy consumption, but really making sure to reduce CO2 in their daily processes and in their daily operations. Right. And one year onwards, we have a lot of team colleagues, which is super cool. And um, we still follow the same mission. Yeah. Fantastic. So let's let's kind of delve into that a little bit deeper. So so you develop this software. How does it work? You know what? Yeah. What's yeah? What's a kind of typical user case? Sort of customers that that you're 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 signing up to the, to the product. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so basically, the, the 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 main purpose or the main thought that we bring into this software is that energy management needs to be a combined view on everything that is important with regards to energy, which is on the one hand how to optimize consumption. The second is how to optimize the way I procure energy and or electricity, especially. And the third one is for a company, especially, is how am I how am I staying regulatory compliant? And this is what we combine because we also believe that it needs to be combined, <clears throat> right? I mean, the, the more innovative, the more flexible you purchase your electricity, the more you need to make sure that your consumption is also optimized. And this is what we combine in our software, right? So we are super easy to onboard. Uh, we take the normal electricity data, the consumption data that these companies basically generate, um, we onboard them into our cockpit. We make them really use it. Yeah, we make sure that they have an an expert at their side uh, at their side on a monthly, on a quarterly basis to discuss the next step. But we also make sure, and this is the most important thing, the nucleus of what we do, is that the insights that we generate from the data that we receive from the customers on an automated and daily basis are basically so powerful and so insightful that these companies through the software can optimize their consumption on a daily basis. That's okay. kind of what we do. And that's the, the mixture that we offer. How does, that, I see, how does, I mean, how does that work in practice then to optimize their consumption? What, what, so what, what does that actually mean? What, you know, switching mm. them from different, you know, sources of energy, how, how does that actually work? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. So, so basically, I mean, the first thing that you do is bring transparency to the customers, right? I mean, these are customers that um, they look at their, I mean, they, they look at their invoices. Two, two, three years ago, they actually didn't look at their invoices at all, right? Because electricity was at six cents on the kilowatt hour or something, right? So it was just something that they paid for because they needed it for processes. Yeah. Today, what they do is they look at their consumption on 
let's say a monthly basis, they look at their invoices. But what you really need to do is you need to look at it on a daily basis, right? What is what is the risk for a peak load? Uh, peak loads are very expensive. How much am I consuming on the weekends actually, right? And what happens during a day? How much risk is there during a day? And what you can do is by just taking the electricity data from the customers, you can draw a lot of insights Right, so you put okay. artificial intelligence on top of it, right, and then you basically put it, can draw a lot of insights from it, telling the customer, okay, look, there's unusual consumption, or today there is a risk off because you take historical data, you take yesterday's data, and you take external data, let's say weather data, to it, yeah, yeah, and that combined just gives the customer then a very good feeling of the risk profile for consumption today. There's a lot more you can do. But you really have to imagine it's kind of like a virtual energy assistant that guides you through everything, just as you would put a person on a seat in your company. It just guides you through notifications through every day. That's kind of what we do. Yeah. So then, yeah, like you said, it's kind of an energy expert in that particular company's you know, armory, yeah. really. So they don't, they don't necessarily need to hire someone or have a, you know, have a, a, a person in that position. You, you effectively become that person for them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I mean, what you currently see, I mean, as I said, right, we have three pillars in our product, consumption uh, optimization, procurement and regulatory compliance. What you currently see is these three pillars are allocated to different departments in today's companies. And they're only in fractions because it doesn't take up too much time for these companies, right? They don't look into it too often. So consumption right. is with a, let's say, technical director, production manager. Procurement is with the procurement department. Regulatory compliance is with accounting, controlling, for example, or the CFO in total. But what we see is that by combining these three, we actually generate something new, a new integration in a company. Yeah, And then, I mean, just, just imagine we have, um, we have a steel producing company, right? That is our one of our customers, just to put more anecdotes to it, right? And these guys basically said, okay, look, we want to integrate these four machines, these four ovens into the software. We want to understand how they correlate with our general consumption. And we want to be warned whenever something is unusual. Normally what yeah. they do is they put a lamp in their production site and whenever it turns yellow, employees have to do something. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> this is reality, right? Yeah, this yeah. is what wow. we see. Um, what happens with us is we sent them a notification instead of turning the lights to yellow. Yeah? We sent yeah. them a notification telling them, hey, look guys, Right, but not only telling them there is something unusual, but also telling them now what is to do. Yeah, and this is super important. The yeah, second example yeah. is if you look into our second ICP is let's say companies with a lot of locations, a bakery chain with 300 locations, for example. And there you realize that let's say the coffee machine yeah, is turned on in one location 30 minutes before the store opens and in the next location, two and a half hours before the store opens. And this is something which is marginal when you look at one location, but it's yeah. massive when you look into 250 locations, right? Of and course. this is something that we detect. Yeah, that's, that's I mean, that, that's very clever. Um, because I mean, those, like you said, where you, you know, a chain where you've got 200, 300 sites, you know, those extra couple of hours that the, the machine doesn't need to be on for, yeah. yeah, that adds up. And like we said, in, t in today's, in today's climate, it's, much more noticeable for yeah cost obviously the cost is, is a is a major major driver for a lot of this right but what what i think is super cool and you know and i've had similar conversations this before is that it's but you're, you're helping our companies to identify where the potential savings from an efficiency perspective could be and obviously so that means using less energy which means uh create you know creating less of a carbon footprint you know less carbon into the atmosphere but also there's the cost savings as well because the direct cost savings because of that so that that you, know, you kind of make that magic cross where it's you know, it's good for the planet it's good for the environment and it's you know, it's, 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 it's and it's saving money it's going to it's win 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 for everybody so i think that's you know that's what's yeah very very cool about yeah it. yeah and that's also what's What's super important to us, right? I mean, at best, in the perfect world, we would basically only talk about CO2 reduction, right? Yeah. Um, this would be the perfect world. Nobody would pay, basically, uh, we wouldn't be like in a, in a, in a market downturn. But uh, especially today, as we see that prices increase, especially today, as we see a lot of companies suffer, um, it's very important to kind of tie the discussion. Um, yeah. that we are lucky 
that basically the business model or the, the product that we are kind of deploying is, some, is, is, a, is a product where basically the euro saving is directly correlated to, yeah, to, to reduction of carbon emissions, which yeah. is great, right? Because you can have the, 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 euro, the euro angle when you talk to customers, but you can also have the CO2 angle when you talk to customers and it helps us a lot. And the good thing is it also, and most important thing is it helps the customers. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. They sound that the 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 actual you know, the software and the solution you're you're giving them a real, yeah, they, it's it's solving real world issues for them, saving the yeah. money, saving CO two. So it sounds brilliant. Um, let's talk about the company then, Max, because I mean, like you said, the company is officially only a year old, um, but you know, really exciting, very successful so far. So you said that, that you know teams around about fifteen people in the team so far. Um, Earlier this year, March, uh, I believe you said it was, you had a seed round, um, so 2.6 million euros. I mean, that that's you know, no small number. Um, so Thanks. look, super cool. I mean, look, if it's a, there's already been a lot of you know, a lot of success. Obviously, winning customers as well. What is the you know, if, if we're to fast forward six months, twelve months, eighteen, what, what yeah, what does the future look like at EcoPlanet? Yeah, uh, that's that's a very interesting question, right? Um, um, so. I think we have three stages that we are looking into, right? I mean, where do we want to go long term? Is I mean, as I said, right? It, it, the, the clear ambition is that companies that are our customers are the best at energy transition, and best for us meaning the most optimized in consumption, uh, the most innovative in procurement, and basically the smartest and basically the first ones and the best ones to fill out or the, the next certification. Yeah, that's as easy as it is, right? Or as yeah. hard as it is, it's at the same time. You really want to build up a community of champions of the energy transition. Um, what we're looking into into 12 months is, um, yeah, by the middle of next year, we are looking into do, doing our Series A, right? Um, that's what our current plan is. Um, what we are looking into until then is really building a great foundation for the company as a whole. So if you would ask me what we do in the next six months until the end of the year is really growing the foundation. We have very, very clear targets and they are twofold. I mean, threefold actually, right? Number one, most important thing is build a great team. Yeah, I mean, that is what we're currently looking into. Um, but, and the other two, they are basically on the one hand, really having a more in-depth understanding of how we sell, how we basically, get the product or the value proposition best to the customers is really this how to uh, these are the questions that we really want to ask want to answer kind of building up playbooks right until the end of the year um and at the same time while we are looking into traction naturally right um course, yeah. so I, I i think that's what we currently see right there's a market momentum um we clearly see that customers are really looking into energy management so in the next six months it's really about building a foundation that is then ready to grow, right? Towards the next financing round, but especially after, right? And this is kind of the main ambition of what we're currently having. Nice. Well, look, it sounds like there's exciting times ahead. Um, look, obviously 4B, 4.0 being a recruitment business, um, it makes sense for us to kind of touch on, on the growth of the company as well. Yeah. So, I mean, so look, obviously I know it's like, yeah, Use, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming a fair chunk of that 2.6 million is used on growing the team. What areas are you kind of looking to, you know, to help grow the team in? Um, yeah. And also, you know, from a cultural perspective, I know we discussed this, you've got a great team, great culture, but, you know, why would someone want to you know, join EcoPlanet or why should they join you? Obviously, there's lots of lots of other great companies in, in Munich and Germany in general, but, you know, yeah. the people you want to bring in, you know, what, what sort of helps to stand EcoPlanet apart from, from other businesses out there? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, so the hiring approach is something which is really, really important to us right now, right? I mean, um, we are happy, with, very happy with, uh, with the traction and we are very happy with the, the, the stability of our product. But what that means is that basically we are onboarding 50 locations every month now, current status until the end of the, uh, until the, end of the year, which basically means that customer success, customer satisfaction, this is the most urgent thing that we all thrive for, to be honest, right? But this is also something where we really need to grow uh, and where we really need to build up the perfect processes to really make customers happy. Uh, um, it, having said that, we are also very critical when it comes to basically the, the quality that we deliver to our customers. And this is why this is really something that we think about a lot. Um, I think what we really 
push in our company is is a very collaborative approach, right? Whether you are a working student, whether you are a, a full-time employee of a company, um, it doesn't matter, right? Everybody has to speak up his or her mind. And this is, I think, just something that is, is very important. We generally and very frequently kind of also review that one because the culture thing, the fact that we work together, especially having a hybrid approach, is something which is really important. So we come together as a team every quarter, making sure that we review what we've done, what we want to do the next the next quarter, making sure that we also find the joint purpose um, and that we kind of really strengthen the joint purpose with every time that we meet and every time that we move forward. I think what I like, to be honest, about the company um, that we are currently building is we have a very reality-driven approach to climate tech, in my opinion, right? Because uh, as I said, the main ambition, the dream ambition is that we would talk about CO2 only all the time. Yeah. What we see and what we realize when talking to customers is, is the Euro savings that we basically have to talk to talk about first. Yeah. So what I like about our product is I can talk to them about both at the same time with a similar effect. And this is, I think, super cool. Um, looking into our angle to climate tech, uh, this is something that we really like. I mean, and that's, that's important because, um, that there are there are different triggers and different drivers for yeah. people, companies, etc. Um, now, some companies it will be all about the CO two so savings. Yeah, that will be depend. You know, it depends who sits at the top of their company. You know, or who's kind of drive. You know, they it may be all about the CO two savings. Yeah. For somebody else, it might be. Yeah, that the, who knows the company might be in some financial trouble, difficulties, and actually they're looking for savings in marginal savings here and yeah. everywhere. So that might be the driving factor, but in terms of choosing, because, you know, in terms of choosing you, obviously if there's the, the, the energy saving, but the, the cost savings and the CO2 savings, yeah. they're going to select EcoPlanet. So, and, and, and if I might add to this, right, um, you also can bridge the both, right? Because basically, I mean, if you, let's, let's look into a very static procurement contract that you see in Germany right now, right? Um, uh, if you basically look into procuring green energy, there's always kind of a markup on the natural kind of electricity procurement or a contract that you purchase, which is something that doesn't really motivate customers to go into green electricity, right? Especially when they are uh, having hard times. Yeah, but what we can do and what we really, really, really educate them on is, okay, look, guys, you can save on consumption. This saves you euros. And that's why you have a net saving even though you go for green electricity, which might be a little bit more expensive. Yeah. This is the bridging factor that we kind of really foster. Brilliant. Well, I mean, it's, it, it, like I said at the start, it's, yes, I think it's a, a fantastic approach. Um, I, Thanks. You know, you, 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 uh, you know, the, the person, one of the, the co-founders of the business, I said, yeah, you're, you've got a um, you know, great aura, great team about you as well. And looking, you know, looking forward to hearing what the future looks like um, in the future. Bail me a second. Hold on a sec. Hold on. Sorry, but I'm going to have to redo that. My my wife has just come back with my two year old, and I, I don't know if you can hear her in the back. I don't know if you could pick that up at all. Um, no, I cannot. I, cannot. I could I could just hear her in the background. So <laughs> no, I, but, uh, make... I, I cannot. I cannot hear them. Right. So, oh, so right. Well, fine, I just want to. What I do is just want to. I just want to kind of wrap that up. Um, yeah. And I literally was just, I was just about to go wrap it up and finish it, but I think it's best just to, um, just to redo that bit because she's not streaming anymore. So, it's just it's just um, so I'll just do this. Um, well, look, Max, look, it's been, it's been a pleasure having you on, on the show. Look, you, obviously you're, you're, a, you're a great guy. I had a lot of fun talking to you. Um, yeah, that's, you know, the inspirational leaders make this, you know, a, a great journey for their people and their, and their companies and obviously your customers as well. Um, so look, I, I wish you every success. Um, obviously the company, as we've been discussing, I think it's a great idea, great concepts. And it's, and it's obviously been really well executed as well uh which you know which obviously isn't always the case so we, we, we certainly wish you the best and hopefully we can like you come back to this in the future revisit it let's see you know 12 months 18 months what eco planets look like the impact you've been making um yeah. and it'd be, be great to do this again thank you so much thanks for having me it was a really good time to that i had with you um and really happy to come back at some point yeah excellent well the pleasure was all mine max and i'll uh, i'll speak to you soon okay Okay, goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.